Let's talk about the AFC playoff picture because with that win, the Bills are slowly closing that gap there for that number one spot in the AFC. KC, as of right now, still there at the top. Buffalo in that number two spot. <laughs> Pittsburgh, the long shot to win the division in the number crazy. three spot, which is crazy, guys. Then we have Houston, the Chargers skipping Baltimore. We're going to talk more about that in just a moment. And then Denver still in it. Bo Nick still in the mix there for that final wild card spot. Uh, back here with Kyle Long, Lige Dusable, Samantha, myself. We're going to talk about uh, the playoff picture, really the AFC aspect of it. We're talking about the Chiefs and the Bills. The Bills really closing in on that gap. And we were talking about it before this game. Hey, if Josh Allen and the Bills can beat Kansas City, how much of a momentum shift that's going to be for this team? Guys, uh, and Lige, I'll start with you. If we look at the remaining schedule here and, and the difficulty of it and what yeah. you saw on the field on Sunday, who do you think is going to end up in that number one spot? Ooh, that's a really good question because there are some tough games for both of these teams yeah. down the dock. When you look at the Bills, right, they still got to play um, the San Francisco 49ers, right? But they do get the Jets at home, which probably isn't a hard game anymore. A lot of people circled that on the schedule. But then when you look at this Chiefs team, right, Nobody was talking about the AFC West. Everybody's like, the AFC North is the toughest division in the AFC. Yeah. Looks like three potential teams from the AFC West could get into the playoffs. So we saw the Chiefs just barely get by the Denver Broncos last week on a blocked field goal. They still have to play Denver one more time, right? At Denver, right? They also have to play the LA Chargers, who had a big win versus the Cincinnati Bengals last night. So when you look at this schedule, man, Right now, I would give the edge to the Bills. I think they're just playing better complementary football. Also, there are some major deficiencies for the Chiefs. Yes, they are undefeated, and Kyle, you know it's hard to win in the NFL. But when you look at their both their tackle, tackle positions, struggles right there, right? Oh, yeah. Opposite time. corner, opposite of Trent McDuffie. There's a struggle with Nazi Johnson being there at corner, who was a safety. And besides Chris Johnson, uh, Chris Jones, who was providing pass rush? There is a big issue for the Kansas City Chiefs right now. Right now, it just looks like the trajectory of the Bills is pointing up. Yeah, that's what I love about this Buffalo Bills team. Obviously, the X Factor is Josh Allen. Yep. And when he when it was time to call game set match, he called his own number mm -hmm. and did it himself. I think he should have done it to play before as well. <laughs> you get to fourth and two. I'm obviously going to press the Josh Allen button. Yep. When you think about this team, you talked about lack of pass rush for the Kansas City Chiefs in this matchup. I think about how dominant that offensive line has been yep. in the big moments of the season, whether it's running the football with James Cook. They didn't run the football very well, yeah. but what did they do? They protected Josh Allen Correct. long enough for him to make the choice, run or pass, and that ended up being the fatal mm -hmm. thing in the game for the Kansas City Chiefs. I think the Bills take the number one spot. They hold the tiebreaker with the Chiefs right now. They're hot at the right time, and they're not even that healthy, Correct. to be honest. They're <laughs> going to get better in Buffalo. All right, guys, so I want to talk about a team that we really saw standing on business yesterday. The Steelers <laughs> kind of letting oh, yeah. us know Man. that they are maybe a force to be reckoned with in, sure. in the North right now. So what did we learn about their win over the Ravens? They're a dominant defense. They can count on their defense. Which is something a lot of teams can't say. I mean, obviously, yeah. Justin Tucker, uh, usually when you try them on the field, it's an automatic three, but yep. he has really struggled for the Baltimore Ravens. But saw something that we weren't accustomed to seeing from Lamar Action Jackson, a little bit inaccurate throwing the football more down the field yesterday. Had Deontay Johnson wide open in one-on-one -on -one situation, overthrows him, throws him out of bounds. Has Zay Flowers on a slot fade and overthrew him as well. Seemed like the receivers and Lamar weren't on the same page. But kudos to this defense, right? They got after Lamar Jackson, where there's T.J. Watt coming up from the outside. Nick Herbert coming back yeah. from injury was massive for this team. And Patrick Quinn, you know he was juiced up for this game. Being a Baltimore Raven, he played out of his mind. One thing you can depend on is Boswell the kicker and that still curtain defense. They're going to show up week in and week out. Six for six in the field goal department. Yep. I mean, that was the story of the football game. Justin Tucker missing two kicks, a guy that has that been point. quite literally in the history of football right. the most accurate kicker <laughs> to ever do it. He moves out of that spot. Eddie Pinero Ooh, now the most accurate I love kicker. it. <laughs> but when you think about this, four moon balls in the game, one of which was caught by George Pickens. We thought that they were going to have to rely on this moon ball. They didn't. They were able to get the, the football down the field methodically. Russell Wilson, the moment's never too big for him. And in this matchup, I hate to say it, this Ravens team looked like the playoff Ravens football team that we've been so disappointed by in years past. You know, guys, I'm actually looking forward to 
seeing Russ's dance moves week in and week out. And whether they get better or worse or the shimmy, we're going to get another Mr. Unlimited moment. I don't know. Oh, Sierra's uh, got to help him with that, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Him and Pickens. It's must-see TV. <laughs> yeah, though. it really is. And Every it's, week. It's crazy. They were plus money, the long shot, to win the AFC North, and now we just showed it up, and they're yeah. minus 160 to win the division. Another surprise team or trending in that direction is the Chargers, yeah. of oh, course, yeah. um, really coming through. We saw Herbert looked fantastic in that really, really tight contest with the Bengals. It feels like, Kyle, this single-season turnaround for Jim Harbaugh is, is going to happen. I don't want to jinx it for them, but <laughs> it looks like it's trending that direction for the Chargers. I remember when Dan Campbell got to Detroit, and it took him a year of getting their asses kicked a little bit. <laughs> year. This guy, yeah. Jim Harbaugh, just injects juice yeah. immediately into the football team. And I think about a great combination of brawn and brains. Yep. Obviously, they've got guys who can win the line of scrimmage. They invest in the draft in their offensive line. They've got two Pro Bowl-level tackles. Yep. But it's the brains aspect. Mark Tressman is a guy that Jim Harbaugh has leaned on to untap or to tap into Justin Herbert's untapped stuff, which is crazy to think about. He's been unbelievable. Oh, you man. pair the brawn of running the football at will in the first half, Justin Herbert's efficiency with it, and attacking down the field. He is over 10 yards depth of target averaging right now, Justin Herbert. That's unbelievable. Every time he throws a football, could be a first down, Lee Jack. Yeah, and when you look at this team in the beginning of the year, they took on their mantra, the culture of Jim Harbaugh. We're going to be out. We're going to out physical you. We're going to run the football. Last few weeks, though, they've kind of given the gambit to Justin Herbert. I mean, he was throwing it around the yard the first half. I believe he had a perfect quarterback rating. And then to add to that, right, using his mobility, which we hadn't seen him do, and you got to think Greg Roman, right, is probably telling him, dude, you're an athlete. Get out on the edge and run when they go man coverage. Had 50 yards rushing in the first half, which I don't think the Bengals were expecting right now. Again, I don't know if people stayed up to watch that game. I did into the wee hours of the night. <laughs> you know, Joe Shiesty made a comeback, and we would see in past years the Chargers, people on Twitter saying the Chargers are going to charge this thing again, and they're going to lose the game. But Justin Herbert, when he got the ball back, right, when it counted the most, Two big completions to Lab McConkey, and then you saw the physical run by J.K. Dobbins on the power play to get into the end zone. I love the makeup on this team, and not a lot of big names on defense, but they play extremely hard for defensive coordinator Jesse Minter. And Khalil Mack was out yesterday. Yeah, exactly. Lad McConkey's a rookie. He had six catches over 100 yards. This is a guy that you can rely on for if sure. you're Justin Herbert. That was the question mark. All the store, the, the stars that went out the door uh, for the Chargers, yep. you know, you think about Keenan Allen and all the guys uh, from that offense, Eckler leaving as well. They've got young talent that are making plays and that's why Justin Herbert looks so great. Yeah. yeah. All right, guys, moving over to the Colts now. They had Anthony Richardson starting over Joe Flacco. They get the dub, maybe adding some new life, too. <laughs> so did we really see enough of them to maybe put them in the running for one of those wild card spots? I mean, if the Texans keep losing, yeah. for sure, because, I mean, it's going to come down to them winning the AFC South. That's probably the only way the Colts are going to get in. And we've seen the Texans really struggle these last few weeks. They have a big game tonight Nico's versus back. Dallas Cowboys. And Nico is back. <laughs> but love what I saw more specifically in the second half from Anthony Richardson. You can tell the decision to bench him weighed on him. Yeah. But I mean, yeah. Kyle, he ran with physicality <laughs> yesterday. Like, you can tell when he dropped the shoulder on Chuck Clark in the goal line, it was all that was weighing on him. Yep. And when he dropped that it shoulder on him. Yeah, for sure. I'm going to let you know that they, this wasn't right what was done to me. But I love what his progression from the pocket, especially in the second half. I believe he finished 15 of 18 for 169 and a touchdown and a rushing awesome. touchdown in the second half. Like, just progression in the pocket. The things that had plagued him was his inaccuracy, right? Coming into this game, he was only completing 44% of his passes, but he was pinpoint accurate on deep crossers to Alec Pierce on a stutter go to Alec Pierce. He hit him right in between the numbers. So I love the growth that I saw from Anthony Richardson. And we were talking about this in the pregame. Get him involved in the run game. I mean, this is a big freakish athlete. He's an alien. And they did that yesterday. And you could tell his confidence grew in the game because he was able to get that mobility going early. And you know what? The Jets, they went for padded practice Wednesday and Thursday. Yeah. They had to reteach those guys how to, tackle. how to tackle. Some of those guys were pissed off. You would think they would have gone out there with a vengeance getting after Anthony yeah. Richardson. You got to say, if I'm a defender, if you challenge me, if you challenge my toughness, who do I want to play? Correct. Jonathan Taylor, Anthony Richardson. Mm -hmm. Let me go prove myself, my machismo. But then, you know, the cultural out there. Yeah. Happens. Anthony Richardson looks like the guy that they brought in last year to get the job done. Yeah, absolutely. And all the, the AR fans, including myself, are just hoping for some consistency. Yeah, yeah. We sure. want to see him keep those career games going. And stay um, healthy. Exactly. <laughs> Lige, Kyle, we certainly appreciate it. I'm sorry we couldn't talk about the Bears more. I mean, Don't maybe sorry. not sorry. No, yeah. We can skip it. <laughs> maybe that was purposeful because we had uh, Samantha <laughs> and Kyle on. Um, Kyle's going to stick around, but you can hear more of Kyle with Mike Renner on Pushing the Pile, their, their podcast. They dive through all the biggest storylines in the NFL. Download, follow, listen wherever you find your pods or you can watch right now by scanning that QR code.